meet uh, Sharmila, whom I happen to know for many years now. So she's 45 years old, has no formal schooling. She speaks Santali and Assamese, uh, has a smartphone, and uses a bunch of apps on the phone. Now the question is, like all the advancements that we all have been enjoying, because we know a few languages like English and a handful of other languages, so what is the relevance of all of like an LNMs and how we can make them helpful for someone like Sharmila and hundreds of millions of like her around the world? So with this uh, inspiration at Google, we are working on this thousand languages moonshot, where the goal is to build language technologies like machine translation, recognition, synthesis, and so on for 1,000 spoken languages around the world, like Jeff also mentioned, and that's the vision he inspired us to work on. So in this talk, I want to give you a few sampling of uh, explorations we have been doing uh, in this area, and this is by no means a comprehensive list. So when we are trying to build these LLMs and uh, make them useful for a larger number of uh, uh, people and users, uh, inclusivity and doing that in a responsible way are the two dimensions that we are thinking about. And within inclusiveness, uh, having representative data uh, that covers the demographics is really important. So we have an effort called Vani. I want to talk to you about that. Then when we are building these models, rather than building a monolithic model, can we think of building them in a more flexible and modular manner so that it's more extendable to new languages and new domains? So that's an effort called CALM. And then finally, uh, when we are deploying, building these models and deploying them in different geographies and cultures, making sure that they are uh, adapted to the target geographies, like you know, cultural nuances uh, and values are super important. And we have an effort called Bindi, uh, which is looking at recontextualizing responsible AI, and I want to give you an update on that. Right? So these three parts, basically Vani, uh, uh, Kam, and Bindi. So, uh, so Vani is looking at, uh, so India is a, a huge uh, multilingual country, uh, like, you know, there are like 100 plus languages which are uh, uh, spoken by 100,000 plus people, about 60 plus languages which are spoken by million plus people. And as you probably already know that a particular language, kind of like, you know, how it gets spoken is, a, uh, is dependent on what region we are talking about, right? So even if you take like, say, Kanara, the way it's spoken, like, you know, in south of Karnataka versus north of Karnataka, there is a difference. So what I want to do is, uh, like, you know, uh, play a quick uh, clip uh, which shows how when we ask someone to speak, like, you know, how to go to Pragati Medan, which is a location in Delhi, in that UP Bihar region, how that's, uh, like, you know, getting changed. So please listen. Pragati Medan, kaha go Pragati Medan, jange kaise? प्रगति मैदान कैसे जाएं? ये प्रगति मैदान कैसे जाएंगे रे? प्रगति मैदान कैसे जाए? प्रगति मैदान कैना जाए? So as you can see, like, you know, the same sentence, like, you know, when we are looking at that Hindi belt region, like, you know, there is so much of variation. So it's important that when we are building these models, this kind of representative data is uh, captured. So in the Project Vani in collaboration with Indian Institute of Science, we are, that's why taking a region anchored approach rather than a language anchored approach. So what we do is uh, we have, uh, we work at a district granularity in the whole country. And when we source uh, locally relevant images and show it to people uh, from these districts and ask them to describe these images in a language of their choice, which is super important because we are not being prescriptive in terms of saying that like, okay, describe this image in the handful of languages that we care about. Uh, and, uh, and all of this data is being open sourced. So ultimately our aspiration is to go to all 773 districts in the country and then collect 150,000 plus hours of speech and transcribe 10% of that. So if you go to uh, vani.isc.ac.in, we'll be, you'll be able to track the progress uh, of the project. And currently we are in phase one uh, where we have covered 80 districts. So we are going towards the end of the phase one and we are starting phase two, which is another uh, 80 districts. And we have already open sourced uh, or publicly released uh, 10,000 plus hours of speech data. And this is all multimodal data. So you have like the images, the speech, and the 10% of that data is being transcribed. 
And what you see on the uh, right-hand side here is the map from different parts of the country in phase one, where we have uh, sample data from, and the colors are representing different languages that people actually spoke, uh, like you know, that they expressed themselves in. And what's been really heartening to see here is that when you give people that opportunity to express in a language of their choice, the diversity of languages that they use is enormous. You probably cannot see the fine print here, but we have seen uh, like you know, people you speaking in uh, Sambalpuri, Marwari, Chhattisgari, like you know, those languages we would have never thought about, like you know, if you were being prescriptive and telling them like you know, speak in a handful of languages. So I think that's really exciting. And please uh, uh, track the progress on this site. And then we also have a booth here. Uh, you can uh, 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 listen to some of the samples that the data has been collected so far. So that's about representative data. Now, how do we kind of like, you know, build, incorporate this type of data into model building and do that in a flexible and modular manner? So that's where the CALM approach comes in, which is uh, doing composition for language models. And we are thinking of this as an LLM, augmented LLM. So right now, if you have a language model and you want to extend it to cover a new domain or a language, then you have to do expensive, uh, like you know, uh, continued free training or fine tuning for that language, which is expensive, and it's not very scalable, right? Because how how can you uh, enable lots of people to contribute towards development of these models? So motivated by those problems, we've been thinking of uh, this CALM model, where we have an anchor model, uh, which is the model on the right hand side, that we want to augment uh, with knowledge from an augmenting model, right? Which is the model on the left hand side. And we have some additional cross-attention parameters that we learn while keeping these base models frozen. So that way you don't have catastrophic forgetting on these base models, but then you're also able to adapt to, say, new domains uh, to enable new capabilities. So just to give you one example, maybe you are interested in doing numeric reasoning over key value arithmetic. So things like, what is the value of x1 plus xz times xn? where the key value knowledge is there in your, this augmenting model on the left-hand side, and then the numeric reasoning capabilities is there on the model on the right-hand side. So in order to do well on this task, you need to compose like, you know, capabilities from both of these two models, and that's what CALM enables. So if you're interested, you can go and read the paper, but we, since we are talking about language inclusion, we also applied this framework uh, in seeing how we can extend a, a language model for a new language, so, uh, or a set of languages. So in that case, what we did was we had the base model, the anchor model, but then we had a separate model, an augmenting model, which had expertise on a bunch of new low resource languages. And then when we combined both of them uh, through CALM and then uh, uh, evaluated them on uh, language benchmarks, in particular case, machine translation, we see that this composed model is able to do well for many of these languages, and especially the improvements are there for the low resource languages. So this demonstrates one way of how we can build more linguistically inclusive uh, language models, but in a composable and modular manner, rather than having to train like you know, one monolithic model and uh, suffer from all of the problems that were also discussed during the Fireside chat. So now moving on to the third part of how we can uh, incorporate, recontextualize responsible AI. So this is the effort called Bindi, and this was inspired by some of the seminal work that was done by Nitya and her colleagues. So Nitya is also here with us today. And this kind of like, you know, makes this observation that while responsible AI is important, a lot of that work has happened from a Western lens. And when you are trying to apply these kind of models and deploy them across like, you know, different geographies and cultures, it's important that we adapt them to those target geographies and cultures. So uh, this is also not like you know, some uh, abstract problem. Uh, so when, you, when we tried using some off-the-shelf sentiment analyzer, so given a, a piece of string, uh, you say like, you know, whether this is positive or negative, and then we generated a bunch of sentences with different identities, right? So in this particular case, the identities are based on caste. So the only thing that's changing is like, you know, whether it's like Brahmin, OBC, or Kshatriya, or like you know, other caste identities, but the rest of the string remains the same. And we are asking these models to predict like, you know, what's the sentiment of these strings. So what we find is that based on 
like you know, for certain types of identities in this particular case, like you know, there's a significant deviation of sentiment scores compared to like you know, other identities, right? And there was really no reason for these kind of deviations to happen. So this is to highlight that like you know, these kind of biases are there in our uh, like you know, models, and we need to be uh, able to probe and uh, like you know, mitigate them. So uh, with this goal in mind, so uh, we had in this ACL 2022 paper, we laid out a research roadmap on how we can think about uh, fairness in NLP by taking India as an inspiration. And there are three dimensions that we are looking at in societal context, technological gaps, and value alignment. Uh, again, if you're interested, uh, like, you, know, you can take a look at the paper. Now, one uh, last point I want to talk about is in terms of evaluation in this domain, uh, focusing on stereotypes. So some of the examples that I'm going to use on this slide might be offensive to some people. So please, uh, uh, please uh, note, take note of that. But the point here is that when we are trying to build this kind of like an evaluation data sets, we really need a complementary approach of how we can combine like, you know, the scale that comes from LLMs uh, along with community engagement, right? Because the LLMs are going to have like, you know, certain types of coverages, which is great for like, you know, initial scaling, but engaging with communities is also important uh, to, to fix those residual gaps. So we have a data set and an effort called Seagull, uh, where we were able to significantly expand the stereotype evaluation data sets that's there uh, by 5x compared to all other previous uh, data sets of this kind. And uh, now uh, this is able to cover 178 countries and uh, six continents. So this is using LLM scaling. But then uh, when we are looking at uh, like, you know, the residual like, you know, stereotypes, we are able to see that when you engage with communities, we are able to get additional examples that were not covered by the LLM. So I think we need this kind of complementary approach of having both LLM-based scale and then how we can uh, work with communities to kind of like you know be uh, build truly representative uh, data sets and benchmarks. So I'll stop here. But this is an exciting area, and uh, we are hopeful that by uh, collaborating, all of us can really bring down uh, language barrier and make sure that the girl in rural Jharkhand or like the boy in sub-Saharan Africa has the same access to information and opportunities like you and I here. Thank you. Thank you.